All right, welcome to the video. Today we're gonna to walk through installing Apache Guacamole using Docker. So the Docker containers available have changed over the last few years and the various documentation out there and videos are a little bit out of date. And I found a few bugs in the Guacamole documentation itself. So it took me a number of hours to get the whole configuration up and working. So hopefully this walkthrough will save you some time and it is uh, current as of early 2024. So why don't we start with you know, stepping back a bit, what is Apache Guacamole? And simply put, Guacamole is a web-based interface to remote desktop services. It allows you to quickly connect to a remote machine without worrying about juggling different applications, different protocols, etc. And it has a number of different use cases. It can make you know, logging into different machines and administering them much simpler because it's, you know, with a few clicks, you can jump into different machines and it all happens right in your web browser. Or you could use it for quickly accessing your machines from outside your home network. So for example, if you were at work and maybe you kind of want to log into one of your desktops at home to check on some files or anything else, you don't need to figure out how to kind of open up that remote desktop connection through a firewall. You can simply use it uh, doing guacamole and then using other services like a reverse proxy or a zero trust network, etc. I will say personally, I use it to access services while I'm at work or outside the house. And I just love having everything come through a web browser. It's super simple. And oddly, I find it to be even when I use it in the house faster than you're using remote desktop directly. But Maybe that's just me. So just to you know, give a quick example. So as we can see here on the screen, I have my start page. So I'm just gonna I have a really simple guacamole instance up and running and I'll just give you a quick demo and I'm already logged in. And I just have a simple Ubuntu desktop already configured connection and I can come right in here. And there you go. We are in to our remote desktop. As you can see, I have a simple Ubuntu dev desktop here. Well, dev desktop, you know, Opera web browser, very simple. And uh, it works uh, super simply. So with that, why don't we jump into how we actually get this thing installed? So when installing Guacamole with Docker, and let me just swap over to the official documentation here, we're actually going to be installing three containers. First of them is GuacD, and this is really a backend proxy for remote desktop protocols, and it just runs in the background. I'll jump, I'll skip this one. The next one is a, a database for authentication. Now, I don't think you, you need to use a database, but I found it just easiest to go with the flow here and configure a database as they recommended. I'm not doing any crazy authentication. A file would have been fine, but it was easy enough to set up MySQL, so we will set up a MySQL instance as well, and of course, if you already have a MySQL container running, you are welcome to use that. And then the final piece is the web app that you interact with, as you saw in our demo. And this will be uh, running Tomcat 8 and supporting WebSockets. And this will kind of work with GuacD to kind of proxy to your systems and provide the remote desktop connection. So those are the three, three pieces. So what I'm gonna do now is swap over to Portainer and we will take a walk through this. All right, so let's open up container and take a look. What we're going to do is we're just going to use Docker Compose, or as Portainer refers to it, we're going to create a stack uh, to do this and just to make it simple to deploy all three of these containers at once. So I'm going to go into my stacks menu. I am going to add a stack. I will call it guacamole. There we go. You can see I might have done this before. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to write a Docker Compose file that brings all of these pieces together. So we'll start by adding the version number, and then we're gonna define the services group starting with a section for GuacD. So let's put that in. All right, so there is the definition for the GuacD uh, background proxy. Now, a couple things to call out here is we are gonna create a separate network 
for all these containers and we'll see that uh, configuration below. And I am gonna set specific IP addresses for a couple of these containers because we need to refer to them. So for example, the, the website needs to know the IP address of the database, et cetera. So we will hard code some of these IP addresses. Now, for those of you that are experts in Docker or want to, or want to kind of genericize this a little bit more, you could probably set up DNS or some other services to abstract this and not hard code IPs, but just for the sake of moving, moving quickly, and I didn't need any crazy configuration, I am gonna hard code the IPs. So after setting up uh, the GuacD, uh, the next thing we're gonna set up is the Guacamole uh, web application. And we're just going to pause here and talk about what we have so far. We're not quite done setting up Guac Web. Uh, a couple things to call out. First, obviously, we're going to expose ports 8080 since this is where you'll be interacting with it. We have to set up a couple environment variables to make this one work. We have to call out the name of the MySQL database and we will get to that later. We're gonna go through how we actually configure the database, set up users, permissions, et cetera. But these need to be passed in as environment variables. So we are going to have a database called guacamole underscore DB. The MySQL instance is going to be running at this IP address and we will put that in here shortly. Hopefully you pick better username and passwords than I do, but this will get you started. And so there's the MySQL username and password. And finally, the web, obviously to proxy these remote desktop connections, needs to know how to communicate with GuacD and here is the IP address of QuacD, which we had defined just up here. So let's continue finding this service. We have just a few more items to add. All right, that wraps up the definition for the Guac Web. So we just added two more uh, blocks to this. We added a dependency block that says, wait until the SQL database and GuacD are started before starting this container. And then we uh, added it to the, the network we defined for the set of containers. And note, we are not hard coding an IP address for this since we don't need it. So the next thing we're going to add is, well, the last thing left, which is the SQL database. So let's get started on that service. All right, so we just went through and added everything else that we needed, including the, the volumes and networks, just so because it'd be easier to explain how all this works together. So here's the definition of the SQL, uh, the MySQL container. Pretty straightforward, we're gonna use the MySQL image, one environment variable, again, a password, but it'll work uh, for this demo. And then we're gonna join this to the network we defined and again, specify its address, its IP address, since we referenced this in other places. And then the other thing we're gonna wanna do is set up a place to uh, make sure that the data is persisted across deployments. And if you don't do this and you kind of redeploy, guess what? You're going to lose your database and that's going to be it. So what we're going to do, I'll jump down here. We just defined a volume called DB data. Very simple. Don't need to do anything more than that. And then here we reference the volume, basically expose this to the container and say to mount D DB data under varlib MySQL, which is the, the default place MySQL looks for its data. So that's kind of how we set up MySQL and store its data in a way that won't lose it. And then the final piece here is the network section. And so we talked about this more than once. So we set up a network called GuacNet following subnet, and then we hard-coded a bunch of IPs. So that should be it. So why don't we deploy this and see if I made any mistakes. All right, before we hit deploy on this and see what happens, I'm just gonna slowly scroll through this in case you are following along and want to copy this down. And I'll also try to put a link to this in the description below in case you want to grab a copy of this file. So here we go.
All right, that should be it. So why don't we press the button and see what happens? So this, if it works, this is gonna be pretty quick since I already do have the images downloaded. So here we go. Oh, there we go. Ah, okay, so I messed up the depends on section. All right, so it looks like the stack was deployed successfully. So let's jump over to the containers and see how these are going. All right, so they are up and running. I found like WACD does take a while to, to actually finish starting and be up and running, but it seems to work before that. And you can see in here the IP addresses we set. If we jump into these, we should see the environment variables. Yep, it looks good. So you think we're done, but we are not. We still have a little bit of work to do because we never actually set up the database. So if we actually tried to go to the web app today, we would probably get an error. So we'll just check this. So I'll just go back, I'll open up guacamole. And sure enough, there's an error right there. And if you, I've had to debug this a couple of times and figure out what's going on. And, and what you can do is, so we got an error on the web app you can go into the web app itself and look at the logs. And what you see is, so there's an access denied for this user. And what's going on here is we actually never created a database uh, for guacamole authentication in MySQL. So that's what we're going to do now. So jumping back over to the, the guacamole documentation, we need to do a couple things to initialize the database. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to go run this command on one of our containers to generate a database initialization script, and this will set up the basic table structure and everything else. But you actually need to do some manual steps before this that involve creating the database and setting up a user that grants permissions. And there is no automated script to do this. So we're gonna do it by hand. The commands are, and the commands are down in here in database authentication. So again, we're using MySQL, so you'll need to kind of do this step for your individual database. So what we're gonna need to, need to do first is log into the MySQL instance and run a simple create database command. So what we're gonna do is go back. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here to containers. We're gonna click on the, the guac SQL container and we're gonna open up the console. We're gonna to connect to it. What we're gonna do is start MySQL. All right, so we are logged into MySQL using that terrible password you saw earlier. Now again, jumping back to the documentation, what we need to do is issue a create database command to create the guacamole DB. And you'll notice this is the same name of the database that we passed into the Docker compose file as the, the database name. So I'll just jump back here in the container and we will create that database. All right, database created. So the next thing we need to do is create a user and grant it proper permissions. So here is the SQL from here, from taken right from uh, the website. Now there's a couple of problems with these statements, but I will just paste these in and show you what modifications you need to make. So first thing, obviously put in your password. Now remember this password was already set up in environment variables uh, in the Docker compose files, so make sure those all match up. And the next thing we're gonna need to do is change this uh, local host, because if we put local host in here, it'll just restrict logins to the database from the local host, and that will cause a whole number of failures, which took me quite a while to figure out. So we're just gonna put wild card there perfect we created the user now we need to grant permissions and similarly we are going to actually just swap this out too and we should be done and the final uh, command we need to issue is to flush the privileges all right, and as you can see, I couldn't even remember how to spell that across uh, one window. So there we go. We have a user created. We've granted permissions. Hey, if, if we just want to confirm that the user is in there, we can just select, uh, we can just check that real quick. And there we go. We can confirm that the, the guacamole user is created. So we're all good. Well, not quite. 
we have a database, we have a user, we have permissions. We still have no table structure yet. So that's the next thing we need to do. And what the way we kind of bring in a table structure is to execute that init DB, that SQL uh, that was created earlier. So let me just jump back up and kind of walk through the documentation of how we do this. So the, the next thing you need to do, if you haven't done it already, and I'm not going to show this step, is open up a, a shell on your server and generate the init uh, DB SQL file. And all we need to do is execute this. So I'm going to pull over an SSH window here. So we have an SSH window on the machine running all these containers. And as you can see here, I have uh, the init DB script, which has been generated. So there you go. So what we need to do is execute that. So what we're going to need to do first is copy this file into the container. And then we're going to go back to the MySQL window we had open within the container to execute it. So again, next step is to actually copy this file into, into the container. So we'll do that now. All right, so we successfully copied the initdb.sql into the container. So we're gonna swap back to Portainer here where we already have our window open to MySQL. So you think you can go ahead and run that script. You cannot just yet, you need to do one more thing, which is you need to actually set uh, MySQL to use that database that we just created. So we'll do that here. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and run the init DB script. And remember, we simply copied it into the root of the container. All right, that should be it. So let's just kind of go back over what we did. We created the database. We created a user. We set permissions for the user. And then we ran the scripts to generate all the tables. So in theory, if everything went well, we should be good to go. And now we shouldn't get an error from this web app. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna close this and we'll just reopen this and hope for the best. There we go, perfect, we have a login screen. So I think, I think we might be home free now. So we're gonna log in, we'll use the default login and password, which is guac admin for both. And there you go, it looks like we we probably have a successful guacamole install. So the next thing to do is actually set up a connection and test it. So what I'm gonna do is, and I would highly advise make another user, do all the good things you need to do for security, but we're just going through this quickly. So to make a new uh, connection, what you do is you go into settings, connections, I'm gonna make a new connection. I'm just gonna make it to another VM uh, running on my Proxmox cluster. I'm going to use RDP. And you can go and uh, party all day with all these uh, parameters if you really want to get serious about it. But we're just going to do, we're just going to set the IP address. And this should be all we need. I'll just leave everything else as is. We'll hit save and then you go back to home. Here's our connection. And there you go, worked perfectly. And this was actually what we were looking at before at the beginning when I kind of did the initial demo of Guacamole. And I just showed you this VM uh, running on my Proxmox cluster, running Opera and all the other kind of basic apps you need. Well, there you go. We have gone and from scratch set up an entirely new stack to deploy Apache Guacamole using Portainer. We kind of showed how you work through a couple bugs along the way, set it all up, get the SQL database configured and get it deployed. So the question is, where do you go from here? Well, there, there's a couple things to consider next. The first is, and let me just jump back into the stack for this. So you can look at the editor. If you're truly, truly paranoid, not paranoid. If you really like perfection, I'll say. So I'm sure you could go and you could clean up this Docker Compose file quite a bit, find a way to factor out these IP addresses. And the other thing you can do is there's probably much better ways to do that database initialization that we did by hand. And there are ways where you can actually bring in another volume and define a script with a certain name and MySQL will automatically execute that on deployment. And so you can automate a whole bunch more of what I've shown you today. The reason I didn't do it is I honestly only expected to do it once and I just 
didn't feel like going through the automation process because I didn't expect to be blowing away the database. But that's certainly a refinement uh, you can make on this. And then the other thing to think about from here is like if you want to expose kind of remote desktop web proxy outside of your home network, how do you do that? And that's probably a topic for a whole other video and there, there are many options to do that. But you could look into reverse proxies like Ingenix, you could look into things like zero tier if you want to use zero trust networks, and you could also just use a simple VPN solution. And just to kind of fast forward and give you some of my experience with this, for at least where from the environments I am accessing this externally, like I would love to use a VPN, it would be my preferred option, but it's simply not uh, an option because I can't install a VPN client on a machine I don't own. And the same goes for zero tier. I actually started to play around with that a little bit and uh, got it working and it seemed to work really well in terms of you know, exposing uh, this, this kind of website externally. But again, I couldn't install the zero tier proxy. So I was left with playing around with Nginx and setting up a reverse proxy. And my situation, that, that works fine. I have found it to be very, very slow outside the house, like almost to the point of being unusable where it's it's good enough to kind of open up a website and maybe keep something like Gmail running so you can see what's going on. But in terms of any interactivity, it's just not working well for me right now. But that's probably something I need to dive into a little more. But those have kind of been the three options I've looked at and, and played around with. But I will leave it here. I hope you found that super helpful. And if you're looking you know, for a nice way to kind of package up remote desktop access, even if you're using it just inside your network it is it is super easy and and just really simplifies the remote desktop connection process i did find the initial setup to be a little bit laborious kind of working through all the different bugs and problems but i hope with kind of what i've gone over here you should be able to get this up and running in between 15 and 30 minutes i think it's a it's a wonderful product and um big time saver so let me know what you think down in the comments and have a wonderful day